but I learn a lot from the music. The improvisation, the playful thing, you know, was very important in my design. And as I said, I wanted, never wanted to look like a typical Swiss designer. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Design Interviews and Questions. Today, we are with Niklaus Troxler. He's a Swiss graphic designer, precisely from Willisau. Um, he studied in Lucerne and in Paris. You probably know him because his posters are really famous and are exhibited around the world, included MoMA, uh, Copper Youth Museum. So, Wherever you go, you can find a poster of him. Um, he was a professor in Stucker and uh, of course, he's also a AGI member since 1989. So welcome, Niklaus. Thank you to be here. Hello. So, um, if you don't mind, we could start with the first question, uh, which is, what made you become a designer? I'm not so sure, but I think as a kid, I liked very much to draw. I draw utopic cars and planes and later animals and landscapes. When I was a school boy, there were fantastic posters around in our little town, especially designed by Donald Brun, Celestino Piatti, and very important of Herbert Leupin. He was really my famous poster designer at the time. Maybe this was the reason I became a, a, a graphic designer. Okay, so you started with uh, uh, with a look around you, so you see a lot of things that you liked it. But uh, did you study graphic design, or you studied something else to get here? Because in the previous interview, we saw uh, many others that started with illustration or architecture. Yeah, so, in, my, in my case, I, I first I did an apprenticeship as a typesetter. You know, the, the classical typesetter with lead, letterpress. Okay. And that was fantastic because I did the the examination for art school before I did my apprenticeship as a typesetter. So I, I had the freedom to, to go to the, the art school for special courses. I did three evenings. I took courses and also on Saturday because I had also always fit the examination. And so I had a very good experience as a typesetter. And when I finished that apprenticeship, I went to art school. <laughs> so I had basic typesetting, which was fantastic at the time because I was just at the end of the classical typesetting, letterpress techniques, and also at the beginning of photo, photo um, lettering. Okay, so... Um... I think it's interesting because you started uh, um, with something that the, it's very technical and then you explored the world of graphic design for who knows uh, your posters. They are really um, creative with a lot of colors uh, and different shapes. So it's, it's a bit you different. Know, I always understood typesetting also as a as a playful profession, okay. you know. And when I when I started uh, graphic design, you must know in that time the uh, typical Swiss graphic design, the so-called modern style or Swiss style, yeah, was very omnipresent. And I, I, I was not a, just a great fan of that because everybody was designing like that. So I was more more interested in, in what's going around. 
like pop art, the British and the American. And also I liked very much the more illustrated styles. As I already said, uh, Herbert Leupin, but also the Polish posters were a great influence to me. That, that's very interesting, actually. Also because I'm thinking about Wolfgang Weingart, who as well started with typesetting, and then he needs uh, to explore graphic design, uh, yeah. playing, like you said. But then yeah. he, he took probably a different uh, way, talking sure. about the style. So he, for him was more an exploration of the rigidity of Swiss rules. So in, in your case, I think was uh, maybe different. And so w what was for you the design? Uh, well, uh, first, I think everybody's different or has to be different. <laughs> and I believe a lot in the personal expression, you know. I am what I am. And I was very interested in the music and the jazz. And when I did my first poster, I did my first poster for my first jazz concert I, I, I organized myself. So, so it, it, it went always hand in hand, the designing and the organizing of jazz concerts. So, so, but I learned a lot from the music, the improvisation, the playful thing, you know, was very important in my design. And as I said, I wanted, never wanted to look like a typical Swiss designer. So that is very personal in a way. But on the other hand, I learned it. I learned the roots. I studied the roots very strictly. We had a, a, a very good education in that in Switzerland. And, and it's good to know everything and to, to, to know how to do it precisely and to, to understand the information, design as an information platform. And I learned that, but then I, I felt free to to break these rules, to 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 do it my own way. So, so what is design for you? Oh, well, design is is first of all is 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 a communication with information, but that can be images and text, typography and graphic shapes. You know. It, it's it's a wide field. It's but also I think you have to to express yourself in a way to 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 fit to reach the passersby. Especially the poster is a is a media is a fantastic media. To you you put it in the streets and people react or react not. Huh? But that's communication. So um, as a designer, you you just said. Uh, I communicate. So that's what you create, communication as a designer? There, there are always, your job is to transform information. Uh, you are now, especially in my case, I, I, I announced so many jazz concerts or, or poses for theaters or for, for um, also for commercial stuff, I did a, a lot, of course, to make good money. <laughs> but, but it always has to transform the information to an audience, to a passersby, to a viewer in the streets, and you have to reach these people. That's the only goal you can get, that you, they look at the poster. And that's a lot, that's a lot. You pass so many things in the, in the streets you never look at. And um, I always try to make my poster as interesting that people look at. Okay. And when you design a poster or any kind of project, yeah. is there a process that are you interested in or every time you act like free? Uh, I find... I think it's very interesting to 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 start it in different ways. I have not one specific design process. 
Sometimes I start, of course, first you think about the subject of the job you have to do, what have to, what is your job, and then you think a lot, you need time for that, you scribble, you sketch, you rap, probably sometimes it's just words or terms you write down and give you time to combine, to think about, and then the visual is the second step sometimes. But sometimes the first step is just the scribble, the sketches. You listen to music, you go for a rehearsal of a theater uh, play and you look at it, and you sketch, you sketch, you come to an idea. It can be very different how you come to the idea or you, you, you read about uh, a musician or a group or listen to the music, you, you know something and you, you go on to, to do this. I feel f very f free how I start, how I end. Huh? It's all important when it's finished, when you say that's it. Okay. But the way to go there is different. So is for you important the process or just the final outcome? Because yesterday uh, we talked uh, with uh, Thomas Kronbichler of Studio Mood, and for him the process doesn't matter. It's not so important because the important is the outcome. That's right. The result is always important. But the process, the process for you personally is your experience, is your pleasure. It's great fun to do a design. The process is fun. That, that, it keeps you, the daily work is, is the process. And of course it's satisfied when you have a good result and you can put it out. But the process, I know after all the years, is, is, is what you need every day, you know, to do something, to create, to, to, to change, to, to look at it, to be to criticize, you go on another way and so on. That's, that's, a, that's a game, but also a funny way to, to, to uh, create something. And do you think perfection exists in design? Yes, sometimes too much. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, our field, our field is from chaos to complete order perfection. We always play in between. Sometimes it's more chaos, chaotic, sometimes it's more perfection. But we have to deal with that. We have to deal with that. Sometimes, let's say, information, it has to be clear. You have to, if it's not clear to transport this in a, in a communication media, you are wrong, you know. You need both. You need sometimes more perfection, sometimes less, you know? But do you think you can achieve the perfection? Can you get perfection? Or you only play between chaos and perfection? These are, these are so many decisions in your process. What does it need? Does it need more freedom, more playful way? Does it need more more concrete, more, more, more perfection. It's always a deal with that. Yeah, we leave it open. When we start, we leave it open. But then we come to a point and we, we change and change and, and come to a solution. And that means it can be perfection. The result can be a perfect design or it can be a chaotic design, but still, still communicating the content. <laughs> you are from um, a previous generation of designers and what I think it's really nice from your posters is that are still contemporary also if they have been designed in, in the past, in the previous oh. years. Um, what do you think in the, uh, about contemporary design? Because, as I said, you are from another generation, but you are also still designing in a different generation. 
Yeah, well, that's that's the, one of the important things in design. As a designer, we have we have to work, we have to deal with our time, we have to react on the time. When I worked in the 70s, I started uh, as a designer in the 70s. It was a completely different time. You know, we had the the uh, the Vietnam War. We had the political uh, statements a lot from the from the young generation. We had um, we, we had to deal with other uh, other problems like today, and so we reacted on that time. And I felt always designer has to react on the time. The 80s were different than the 90s, so my de development uh, went quite well. I, I always try to to be part of the society of today and to react on on the society. So that makes the dif the differences over the years from from the decades. You know, I think my my design looks. I hope it looks still uh, a walk that I can react on our time. And I don't want to design like in the 70s, right? <laughs> it would be stupid. And also it's more interesting personally for me to try something new, you know? Yeah. So when you design the posters in the past, you, you were not thinking like I'm doing something that is kind of timeless. You were just no, designing. No, never. no, design has not to be timeless. <laughs> It's just for 14 days or so, for two weeks, three weeks. Yeah? A poster is in the streets for two weeks, so it is not long. So we can take the risk also to do something different. Sometimes it's really shit what I did, yeah? but I did it. You know, it's just for a moment, but I think we need the experience yeah? to, to, to risk something, to do it different than the last time. So always to the time. I, I, I'm, I'm very glad when people react to my posters today. When even young people say, oh, well, cool posters. So I say, why it's cool? And say, yeah, it, it fits me. It really touches me. So that's that's enough. Huh? That's all you have to do. And um, But I think, uh, I look, I read the newspaper, I read the TV, I read books, I, I talk to young people. It's, it, it's, I have to deal with that with my time. So that makes life interesting. You said um, that it's important for a designer to try to make bad things also. Uh, so I think this is a good concept for uh, students and young designers. You especially, you, you teach uh, in Stuttgart and uh, one of your um, students was also Eric Blackpool. So <laughs> yeah. um, I think for you, education is, uh, is important. What, what do you think about um, design education today? Um, <laughs> it's stupid, but I think I learned more from the students than they learned from me. <laughs> it's, it's good to, to, to discuss, uh, to, to, to work, to be in contact with young people. Uh, to think about a project, and you have so many different meanings, different ideas on a project. I like that very much. But I think this uh, teaching is more or less um, give the young people, the students, the freedom that they they are free to try everything, to experiment. Uh, if they feel free and experiment. Of course, they have to know a lot of tools and a lot of techniques, but that's easy. Everybody can learn that technique is, is, is an easy thing, but it's not that important. Important is that they can express themselves different than the other two, uh, personal expression. And that was my so-called credo. But I, I must say, yeah, I learned a lot from them. <laughs> They kept me also a little young, you know, and to reflect the time as I, as I know that is important. Especially because of the time um, today, comparing with your generation, we have internet, hmm. which had um, huge impact on design. What, 
what's your opinion about that? Do you think internet had a good impact on design? Is it good or is it bad? I need it. <laughs> it's communication. Huh? You know, like we do now Skype. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good system. I, I, I don't care so much the techniques. I take it what I can use, you know. I, I, in my, in my um, career, I had, I developed, I mean, the photocopier was just new when I started. <laughs> so I learned, as I told, the letterpress, huh? typesetting. <laughs> it's a long time ago. But I don't care. I can, I can do type with computer tools, but I can still draw some type, you know, by hand. It's, so it's, I, I take what I like to do and we decide. I think it's important that we use our hands, you know, the, the thinking from the thinking through heart to the hand. That's a good way uh, to bring it on the paper. And I do what I like. I can say I like I like the tools. I like the computer. I, I do a lot of uh, in vectors, you know, in uh, Adobe Illustrator. It's my is my my preferred tool. You know, I do so many because I learned it also. I did it, the artwork by hand at the time. It took a lot of time to do that. So now it's easier. I can do the vectors uh, easy by uh, Illustrator. So I learned that it's another technique. It goes faster. I can change very, very fast. In the early times, I have to start from the beginning again and again. <laughs> so that's that's a big help, you know. But it changed so much. It changed so much, but not the point of viewing and thinking how to design. It it doesn't change a lot. We don't. Uh, we, we we take it too, too important. I think. I talked a lot with, with designers, and and um, they also think it, it's not that important. We just do it with new techniques. Huh? You have to go on and on. You have to, to do it in an easy way, and you have to, to, to have fun to do, huh? even if it's by hand or by computer. Yes, absolutely. But um, this um, impact of Internet also... Uh, brought Facebook, Instagram, and social media that you are using as well. And a lot of young generation of designers are uh, uploading and posting um, new projects on it. So, like, everyone can also do it. Do you, do you see good things or...? Yeah, I, I see good. I see... Very very much good, good results from young people. I, I'm very interested in that. But also a lot of shit, of course, <laughs> like always. <laughs> but, you know, it's a communication system. Instagram, Facebook, it, it's okay. It's okay. I don't care. I look at it and uh, I don't spend too much time. That's also important. You, you, uh, it's, it's better to use the time to do something yourself, you know, <laughs> than to look at us as a work but i like today we are in a good situation because we we have not one uh, dominating style huh? we are not a style of our time every everything goes you know you you see handmade work you see high tech work animating and animated stuff very on a high level on a high technique but what's important at the end is does the design touch me or not? Huh? It's all important. <laughs> Can be very simple, huh? very simple sketch. If it's if it's funny and good, and has has some specific uh, character and heart, it touches me. And and on the other side, a very complicated design can also touch me. It, it, it's not a question of of technique. And where do you see? The, the, the role of the designer in the future. Do you think is is gonna be like today? It will change. 
he will uh, be going back? In a way, in a way, it, it's it's changing all the time. Everything, our daily profession is changing. But on the other hand, it stays also the same. We have to we have to transform ideas into a visual communication that will stay forever. You know, it's so simple. It can be probably it's more films today. You know, I say also I do posters for an audience who has to go to a concert of 200 people. But probably more people look at my posters in the Instagram or on the website or uh, on the Facebook. Huh? It's also a communication. It, it is worldwide. But the, the, the main job is to bring the people to this concert, <laughs> to two, four, 400, 500 people maximum, you know. That's stupid in a way. But the communication goes on. You, you are in the community, in the designer community, to, you share. Huh? That's, that's, that's new. That's new with the media. But of course, in future, we will need the designers as much as today. Because we have a future, and the future has to be designed. And so many problems has to be communicated by visuals. It's really, really important what you said and introduce us to the next question and the last one uh, regarding this moment that we are facing now with, with this virus and this global pandemic. So what do you think the designer world can do now for this moment? Can we help or cannot? Well, I, I was right thinking on this yesterday evening. I react sometimes political, politically on specific problems. And, uh, but I was too busy with, with uh, organizing myself at home and we stay more or less at home now as everybody. <laughs> and, but we, we should, we should uh, also help people. Huh? help people with images and, and ideas to, to survive, huh? to survive. Even it's, don't be too pessimistic, huh? there is hope. Take serious the rules, huh? some, some don't understand yet. Huh? Even they don't understand yet how to, how to live. Uh, they don't. They don't care the rules. <laughs> they they won't party still, you know. And but we could we could do sides and put it on Instagram or or whatever. Not in the streets. Nobody goes <laughs> into the streets. <laughs> Poster is not the not the way. But <laughs> maybe maybe little um, little ideas on on the internet and Facebook and uh, Instagram. We cannot okay. change. We cannot. Help. We can help a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Niklaus. It was thank really you. nice to have you here today, and uh, thank you especially for the support to this project. Um, as you said, what we are trying here with the design interview ten questions is to share some content and give some content to people in this moment that we must stay at home. So thank you to join and help and supporting, especially. Thank you. Thank you very much.